Hey there, this is Matt once again, and welcome back to another review. I was actually going to do this a bit earlier, but I had to redo it because of some issues. But the film is Exists from 2014, which is a found footage Bigfoot movie. Which, yeah, I have not had the best of luck with those, but I will say this is easily one of the better Bigfoot movies and one of the best. Not one of the best, and honestly, the only good found footage Bigfoot movie I've seen. Of course, I should have known because it's directed by Eduardo Sanchez, who worked on the original Blair Witch Project in 1999. He worked on this film that was interesting called Altered. Heard about this from a couple of nice people on Facebook. I think one of them was uh, Matt Thomas, aka Studio Red Band. Very nice guy. Said that this was a good flick, and I'm like, I don't know. I've had bad luck with found footage movies, Bigfoot movies, especially Bigfoot County is one of the worst pieces of shit ever. Bigfoot Lost Coast tapes had interesting ideas and shots, but just did not gel into a satisfying experience. Well, that's why I saw Willow Creek is a fucking awful, boring movie. Which Willow and Mad Morgan would stick a fucking wand up its ass and turn into dust. Turn into a pig. Fuck Willow Creek. Why that film got praised by critics when it's a boring goddamn movie where a couple does a documentary, interviews a couple folks, and then one 18 minute scene inside a tent. Where? What's that noise? What's that noise? This movie shit actually happens. Bigfoot you actually see and you get some really cool looking shots. You get to see Bigfoot more than once. Some capable, some really good makeup. You get uh, a capable cast. I like the lead guy. The others I wasn't really sure on at first, but as it went on, I kind of felt sorry for the others. It does something different with the ending, a little bit unique, especially to series a found footage flick. Willow Creek had the same type of fucking ending as most found footage films. Nothing fucking happens. What, just because Jordy by Bob got gold through it? Who gives a fuck? I would love someone to explain me why Willow Creek is better than this movie. I would love for one of those critics on Rod Tomatoes to explain that to me. Please, I'm all ears. Just Willow Creek is a boring fucking flick. Keep wanting to curse. This movie, though, is a found footage flick about a group of people of five that go on to the woods. There's this cabin there. And yeah, it's not perfect. You you know, part of me is wondering why this is lead guy carries so many cameras. I know it's to make YouTube videos, but I'm like, ah, I don't know if you need this many cameras. And then I'm like, okay, wait, there's some music like at the beginning of the film and at the very end of the film. Other found footage movies, I'm like, why do you need music in a found footage film? Doesn't that kind of not work with the idea of found footage? But in this movie, I was fine with it. And so it comes to show you, when you're enjoying the film, you can overlook nitpicks and things of that nature. And the music at the end credits was nice and subtle. So, I actually liked it. Didn't bother me in this movie, as would in other movies. And, what happens is, they're driving, they hit something, they don't know what it is. Then, Bigfoot is pissed off and is trying to get in their cabin and fuck with them. And I won't give too much away until I go into spoiler territory. But okay, overall, before I go into spoilers, I enjoyed the film. Number one, it was short. It was to the point. It was an hour and 15 minutes without the credits. With the credits, an hour and 20. Number two, I didn't mind the lead guy. I thought he had some nice lines of dialogue. When he doesn't know what's going on, he's like, this is, was that a Bigfoot type thing? He's like, hey... It's okay, man, like, because I'm hairy, too. Chits dig it, man. And he's smoking weed. He's, seems like a cool guy. 
Number three, some really good looking shot sequences. Really good looking shots. Which I'll get more into when the spoilers, but like, there's quite a few like, wow, like how'd they do that? And wow, that looks really cool. And uh, number four, I thought I did a decent job building suspense and tension. Number five, it didn't have the same typical shitty ending as 99% of found footage foots do. The little bit that it did at the end, it was a bit unique, made it, the movie more interesting to me, more intriguing to me. <clears throat> yeah, this is easily the best found footage Bigfoot movie I've seen, and one of the better Bigfoot, Bigfoot movies, period. You know, I enjoy Abominable, Harry and the Hendersons. I would put this in the in the top three, along with those two. Because believe me, there's a lot of shitty ones. I've even made a I've seen a lot of them. I even have a playlist of big Bigfoot movie reviews. I saw a fucking porn Bigfoot movie called The Deep. Yes, I reviewed it. It's on the playlist. Why? Because for a laugh. And I heard the cinema snap talk about it, so I'm like, okay, for a laugh, let me watch this since I was doing other Bigfoot movies. Again, more spoiler story now. I like the lead guy. He did some dumb stuff at the beginning. I'm like, oh, I don't know about him. But. Bits of it made me gravitate towards him. You know, he's trying to sleep in the passenger seat. They're messing with his beard, trying to light his beard. There's a nice shot when he realizes his brother may be dead. And the brother's girlfriend comes behind him and they have this nice shot with no dialogue where they're hugging each other. While the, the guy's trying to fix his brother's bicycle. Again, a couple of lines of dialogue I said before, you know, I grew, the guy grew on me. The other characters, you don't really get much about them, not much character development. And I began, like, ah, I don't know about these characters, but I don't know, for some reason, throughout, it made me, I felt a little bit sorry for the characters. I can't explain why, but I did. The movie doesn't take too long for it to get going. It's not like it takes an hour of nothing happening and then something happens. It doesn't do that. Maybe like, well, I'll get to that. When I say cool looking shots, like for example, the brother goes on a bicycle, tries to get, go for help, and then or get a sig signal on his phone. He's on the phone and he turns, he's got a camera on. And boom, there's Bigfoot right in the middle of the road. Or there's, he's riding on his bicycle, and when he turns, Bigfoot is tearing ass through the woods, going faster than fuck. I'm like, wow, how the hell did they do that shot where someone, you know, is going to be in a Bigfoot costume, is going through these woods that fast? Well, uh, I don't know how they did the shot, but it looked really cool. There's another one when this. The Bigfoot pushed this fucking trailer over a cliff. And the guy's trying to wake up. And you see Bigfoot come from up high all the way right onto the trailer. But like, whoa. Or at nighttime, you, they hear these creepy noises and sounds. What's that? The guy's looking out the window. He turns on the night vision. And boom, there's Bigfoot's face right on the screen. And like, it's... Multiple stuff's happening. It's trying to get through the ceiling. It's trying to get through the walls. It grabs this woman, throwing her around like a rag doll. At the beginning, there's these noises they hear. And it's like, is that crying? After you watch the ending of the film, you realize why. And I'll spoil the ending since this is spoilers. One of the big reasons I liked the flick, I liked the idea. Lee guy gets dragged to this little grave. And it's the kid of Bigfoot. That was what they hit. They didn't hit Bigfoot itself. They hit the kid. And so then when you, you know, I rewatched the film again, I'm like, oh, okay. It was bellowing. It was crying because of that. That's the stuff they hear early on in the film. And that's why it's so pissed. And it's like, okay, I, I get that now. And then at the end of the film, like, and this lead guy didn't do anything. He was in the passenger seat. He was sleeping. He didn't hit it. He didn't do anything wrong. 
and he apologizes. He says it's an accident. He's trying to explain. That he has a gun. He puts it down. He faces it away. And the Bigfoot doesn't kill him. Just walks off, disappears, and the last shot is the guys there crying, and the camera's on the ground, and he places it on, and he's going to live, but his brother and friends are dead, and you get this nice, subtle music, which I liked, playing that goes into the end credits. I'm like, okay, that's different, that's unique, that makes the movie and the Bigfoot character a little bit more interesting. Did it take pity on this guy? It behaved somewhat of like a, more of a human than an animal at that one point? Okay, it made a little bit... I appreciate that. Maybe Eduardo Sanchez, like, well, we did that with the Blair Witch Project, everyone dies or whatever. Let's do something a little bit unique. I appreciate that line of thinking. I really, really, really do. And it again made the entire flick a bit more intriguing. <clears throat> and there's more action that happens, at least compared to Willow Creek. Again, I keep going back to that because I don't understand how it gets like an 80% of Ron Tomatoes, but this gets like a 30 some percent of Ron Tomatoes. Hell, this film doesn't even, I mean, it's found footage, I know, but it doesn't even have a Blu ray. Except in like Germany or something. So it's just on DVD. And this only came out like a couple years ago. I thought everything came out on Blu-ray. If it, it was the last five years. If it came out. Nope, not this one. It's only on DVD. I think it has some nice shots. This one guy is using fireworks to try to uh, signal for help. And the guy's turning. And Bigfoot just comes out of the smoke right at him. So this shit actually happens. And then the, the bits that you do see a Bigfoot, and there are shots where you see Bigfoot's face clear as day, it's not a bad effect. It's actually a pretty damn decent effect. Good makeup. In the trivia, I think they said that the guy who played him, I think, worked on some of the Harry and the Hendricks TV show. Only in all of it, because I think the, the guy who did Harry Anderson's, Kevin Peter all worked on the TV show, but I should have looked on the trivia for it. Wait for that to open up. But there's a lot for me to like about this flick. I know I'm repeating myself, but it bears repeating. I, I like the lead guy. I like that it didn't end on a typical fucking note. I like the little thing they threw in that's the, the thing's kid, which made it a little bit more unique. I like that it's a short enough film, but stuff actually happens in the movie. I like the reveals, you know, the face reveal, the Bigfoot and night vision. It's trying to get in through the walls, trying to get in through the ceiling. That There's a scene where the lead thinks he hears his brother's voice and it is his brother and he tries to save his brother and the guy has a shotgun or a rifle and he shoots and the light from the the blast of the rifle reveals the Bigfoot and Bigfoot flies back I like that At 6 foot 7, this is the second time Brian Steele has played the role of a Bigfoot. He originally played the much friendlier Harry from Harry and the Henderson's TV show. Which I thought the Kevin Peter Hall also did the TV show as well. So I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know maybe, when Ke maybe Kevin Peter Hall did and he had to take over. I'm not sure. Creature Fetzer by Weta Workshop. W-E-T-A. I've heard of Weta. Huh. And filmed in Texas. Bastrop County, Texas. Probably said that name on Bastrop. Uh, in fact, I'm sure I fucked that name up, but oh well. And yeah, so I thought I had some good looking shots. It went at a good pace. Had some nice reveals of Bigfoot. Like, boom, right in the middle of the road. Boom, there's his face. Boom, there it comes out of the smoke. Boom, there it lands right on top of the the... The uh, the trailer. 
and you know, I like that it the ending tried to do a little bit more than the usual. It's a 5.2, which is bullshit. 5.2 is way too fucking low. Way too low. Especially what what does Willow Creek get? Five point one. Really? So you're saying this is on level with Willow Creek? I mean, it's not going to be as a bunch of other people voting for it, but really, seriously, five point two is pretty fucking low. That's bullshit. I call bullshit on that. Fucking bullshit. But yeah. Either way, I think this was a satisfying watch. I think if you're into Bigfoot movies or found footage films, it's worth a look. And even if you're not, I think it's a underrated flick. I would say it's an underrated flick. And I give congrats to Eduardo Sanchez. I think he did a good job with the flick. I think it's much better than... Is given credit. Would like to have seen a Blu-ray of this, but it's not. There isn't one in the U.S. But yeah, good flick. It was a welcome surprise. I'll say, considering the Bigfoot movies I've seen, it was definitely a welcome surprise. So I appreciate that. Yeah, either way, thanks for watching. Take care. And we will see you later. Bye-bye.